Welcome back to Danny Robertson Music, where we are here to help you become that performer that you're meant to be. I'm Danny Robertson. Thank you for joining me again this week. This week, I wanted to talk to you, those of you that are specifically keyboard players or piano players. If you have the desire to perform live, or if you're already performing live, let's talk about an easy solution to give you a much more dynamic range in what you're trying to do with your keyboard. It allows you to bring a tool that you already have and make it as minimal as possible to give a bigger, better show. So I see a lot of keyboard players these days that do this really complicated route of getting the sounds that they need on stage. And I am one of those strong believers that the simplest solution is usually the best one when it comes to performing on stage. What I see a lot of the time is I see people who will bring two, three, four keyboards. They'll bring a laptop computer and they'll have, you know, either main stage like the app, like main stage or Camelot Pro or Gig Performer or even DAWs like Ableton Live or Reason. And they try to make it work so that they have all the sounds they need coming through the laptop computer. While that's great, you can do a great amount of work with that. There's two problems that I see with that. You're complicating it to the point where you have to bring a whole bunch of stuff and make sure that all works together. And, and two, what if one of those things breaks? You have so many pieces to this puzzle that if the puzzle pieces are not all there, you could not be able to play. I'm a one keyboard guy. I believe in having one keyboard on stage and doing as much as I can with that keyboard without overly complicating my situation on stage. I don't want to have to go running around to try to find patches and things like that. I want it as simple as possible so that I can focus on the performance, okay? So I want to show you one thing that has helped me that is available on many, many keyboard workstations. So if you have a stage piano or if you have a, um, a workstation, like what I've got is a Motif XF. They've got a lot of newer ones than that. There's a mode on a lot of these keyboards called performance mode. And it just is a simpler way to create a bigger, more full sound or be able to change your sounds quickly and easily without having to press a whole bunch of buttons. So what you're looking at here is my Yamaha Motif XF7. There's a bunch of brands that make these kinds of stations and uh, it, there's a lot in a little package. So what you get, what most people are familiar with is the voice mode. There's, a, there's some kind of thing called like a voice mode, something like that. You get single sounds that are designed for specific kinds of um, instruments. So like, you know, you've got, you've got the piano sound. But you may also have something like a, you know, a Rhodes or a Wurlitzer. And there's a bunches of those versions. So like in my case, there's tons of them. Like I, uh, I really like this natural whirly. So just in this kind of mode, you can choose a whole bunch of different options. But for every time you have to change your sound, you have to press a couple of buttons or, you know, if you're lucky, one button. Everything you need is in the voice mode of the keyboard. And that's actually the way that I've operated most of the time when I've been performing live is I tend to use one patch for one song. You know, most of the time I'm playing a lot, either a piano song or an organ song. A lot of the time you might see me do that. <laughs> One of the greatest joys of being a keyboard player is that you do get to be every instrument for the entire band sometimes. If you don't have a horn line, or if you don't have auxiliary percussion, or if you have to have a synth sound, for better or for worse, all of that tends to be covered by a keyboard player. And so you do end up having to be multiple instrumentalists at the same time whether you can play it or not sometimes. What I find is that there's two ways to go with that. You either go making it as complicated as possible to cover as much of that as you possibly can, or you simplify, 
you get it down to what is actually needed, and then you make it work within your instrument. And so I'm going to show you this performance mode. This is something I use not all the time, but I use it pretty regularly because it's a very useful tool. Now, the big difference that you get here is performance mode has an option to combine several different pieces of an equation together, and it's controlled by knobs or faders. So instead of having access to one sound, like in my case, this keyboard gives me access to four sounds at the same time. Now, keyboards like this come with a bunch of these preloaded in, but what the big thing is, is that you can make these into your own patches. So let me show you what I like to do. So for example, let's look at a patch that I've made called Lovely Mountain. Basically, I use this for a couple of songs live on stage. It allows me to have all four of these sounds available for me. So watch this. So let's say I'm doing the song, Isn't She Lovely? So right here, I've got a piano sound, a rock grand piano sound. I've got a kind of a sweet road sound. It's called sweetness. And I combine them together to kind of give it this kind of silky kind of thing. So I can do something like this. You got that part of the equation, but then I also solo a fake harmonica sound at one point in the song. So instead of having to press a bunch of buttons, I have this nice little fader that I can bring that up and I can bring the other ones down. And then all of a sudden I've got. You know, I've got that kind of sound. I've also got the ability to do a fourth sound in this performance mode. And I use that for the song, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Listen, baby. Right? So then you've got that when I need that, but then I can slowly. I'm not playing it very well, but I can slowly fade in the other sounds and fade out the glockenspiel sound until I have a piano and that same sweetness sound. And then I get Ain't no mountain high enough. Ain't no valley low enough. Right? So it's great for things like that where you need to be able to change a little bit of the sound of your show piece by piece during each song. So um, I have about, I don't know, in a live show, I use about 10 or 12 of these. And I've made them all each based on what I need them for. So here's another example. Let's look at the song Uptown Funk. So in this case, I use. I've sampled that sound into my keyboard. So I'm able to play it on the notes that it actually happens in the real song. Indeed. You know, so that that is all a playable little section. But at the same time, I've also got. Right. I've got those two together. And I've also got if I need it. Don't believe me, just watch. I've got all of those available readily all on one patch, basically. It's one performance mode. And I can dial that in however I want. I can turn them up. I can turn them down. I can even add a fourth patch, which is not even up and used yet. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Right? You can do a lot of things like that just by using the four separate patches that are available in one performance mode. That way, you don't need to bring an extra computer, you don't need to really get anywhere away from your keyboard, and you don't need to press a bunch of buttons. Functionally, this puts everything in one place, 
and it makes it so that you don't have to think too hard about making your changes. You know that all of your changes that you need for a given song are right. Like that's the way I like it is I have it all in my left hand so that my right hand is able to do something while my left hand is changing a sound at the same time. Let me show you two more examples here. I use this, this patch. It's called I Want to Dance. I've made this. It's really only three sounds. I don't use four sounds on it. And most of the time, I really only use two of those sounds. So it's a piano sound, like I use this for... Right? Um, but in this case, I might use it for... Ah, oh, what's the pink song? If you're too school for cool then you treat it like a fool Just let it go We can always, we can always Party on our own So raise your glass if you are wrong See, I can do that without thinking about it. I make the changes as it's needed to happen. And I can make those sounds come off so natural, like that, that last little part. Right? We can use stuff like that. Another one that I like to do, like the like the one that I did with um, Uptown Funk, is I use it in a Dua Lipa song. We do a medley that has Dua Lipa and Britney Spears. And very early on, I realized that I couldn't find the sound that I wanted for this song in my keyboard. I didn't find one that I liked, so I actually sampled the original sound from the original song and I use it live. So watch. Right? And this is a full version. And then I add this. And then it stops there. And then from there, I have it set up so that I can play it. It's more of I play these next samples. They cut off on me. So I have to play it. It makes it musical for me. Got you, moonlight, you're my starlight. I need you all night. Come on, dance with me. And that is all done. It's I, I set it up one day, and I've been able to play it like that ever since. And then the next song we go into is a Britney Spears song. You know, and then eventually we do, my loneliness is killing me, you know, that stuff. But basically all of that is available in one patch for me. It makes it so much easier. When you add computers and when you add samplers and, and pattern modes and song modes, sometimes you're overcomplicating it on yourself. And my personal opinion is the simplest solution is usually the best one. Let's say your laptop breaks down. What is your backup plan? If you're playing professionally and you're touring or if you're playing stadiums, you probably have that set up. But if you are just playing bar and club gigs, you might only have that one option and you might not have a good backup plan. For me, my backup plan is if this doesn't work, I have another keyboard with a set of sounds already prepared, and it doesn't work exactly the same, but I'm able to do it quickly and easily. As always, this is just a suggestion for you. If you want to try it, go right ahead. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. And if you'd like to dive deeper with how to become a better live performer, become that performer that you're meant to be, come check us out at Danny Robertson Music. We have a freebie section that you can start with, which has a few guides and downloads that you can take advantage of. And get started there. See if you want to dive a little deeper with us. We have lots of great courses that we can teach you things about how to connect with your audience, about how to run a live show so that your audience wants to be involved, and so much more. So that's it for this week. Best of luck to you on your next show, and we'll see you soon. You take care.